and good morning. Yes. Uh, thank you, Emily and uh, Rodrigo and Photo Academy for this um, special few days. Um, I think architecture and or the, the world of architecture is always somewhat also related to um, teaching, learning, sharing, and I guess it's nice that my first trip to um, Porto is through the School of Architecture. Um, so I, my, my practice is based in Singapore and I have been there now for more than 20 years. And I will show a lot of uh, images and they will show um, they are my way of the way talking and showing the scenery of Singapore and my, my life, my practice there. So my, my interest is also very much about how um, what we do is part of something. So um, how what we do affects us and what we, um, what we learn affects what we make. So this um, first slide is um, a picture of um, the north, uh, the south east of Singapore facing the sea. And the buildings are the public housing. And this is an image that is um, of a world that has grown for about 40 to 50 years. These housings um, are where most Singaporeans stay, so 80 over percent of Singaporeans stay in housing like this. But also in this image are these rain trees, which are spread out over 30 meters. And these um, trees also have been growing for about 40 years. So this is also the scenery and the experience of Singapore while you stay in the apartment next to the sea winds. Um, the experience on the ground is that you are always amongst these uh, trees. But this is also a particular kind of scenery and not all of Singapore is like this. But this is what, um, in a way, when, the, when it was first um, thought about to do this kind of idea, which was um, to make this kind of public housing, the discussion um, was also about uh, modularity. So in the 60s, when the idea came to resettle a lot of um, people from squatters to, to into public housing. Those people had never lived in a building like that. And it was, there was no such example in, in a way in Southeast Asia. So the architects at that time, a lot of them were mainly trained in uh, Australia and also there were the, um, the British um, architects that um, had been there from before that period of the 60s. So this uh, plan, which is a kind of um, typical unit at the time and a discussion was in that article and this kind of article doesn't appear in Singapore anymore but this um, grid that is drawn is a module of 100 mm and in this plan um, the discussion was what how to make an efficient kind of unit to accommodate um, a certain kind of behavior but it also so the uh, for some reason the dimension of about 10 to 12 meter is a kind of ideal size for the air to move through and in, this, in those early buildings, the air moves in a way quite freely through the building. From so meaning that you would always have a kind of a cross ventilation. And the rooms and the kitchen and the kitchen will always be towards the back and there will be a kind of a shared corridor. This is a drawing of um, a family that has been staying in this um, flat for about, actually about 30 years or so. So this family, before they moved into this flat, they were actually farmers and they, um, they um, reared, reared chicken and actually had a crocodile farm. But, and, and they are actually now only one of the three um, egg farmers in Singapore. Because Singapore has completely changed to become, in a way, a very managerial, urbanized kind of world where agriculture is, um, is a very small component. But to me, what's interesting is that obviously this family can afford to stay in a different kind of environment, but they have also learned to live in, a, you would say, quite a particular kind of environment because the environment really is in a place that is about 1,500 square feet, so 1,000 to 2,000 meters, 2,000 square feet. But the, so their, their every day is that, you know, they, they would live in this kind of environment and the, they would hang their clothes at the back um, and people would different parts of the spaces, but they will all come together to eat in this dining space in the evening. This is a um, drawing of a Malaysian artist. Uh, his name is Lat. 
I really like his work. This um, comic came out in the 1970s. So just above uh, Singapore slightly is Peninsula Malaysia. But this whole area um, had a kind of a world, a world, world of relating to each other and to the environment. This house is a drawing of a typical Malay house. What I really like also is that in the way that he draws and each line that he makes, you really get a sense of the scale, the texture, the feeling. In the t traditional Malay house, um, the size would also be about 1,000 plus square feet. But it is a house raised on timber still, so the air moves through. And it's timber because um, they build with their hands what the, the forest gives to them. But it also is a way of living where you don't have rooms. They, where they sleep is where they eat. And um, their life is um, in that house. It's a kind of a very shed house. And they live on the floor and they use their hands to eat. So this is still the world at that time surrounding Singapore and also was in Singapore. But also the world of the family and the children is not just in that small house. It is um, in the land, it's part of the land, and they are growing up, they also live together with the surrounding. And the, the scenery and the feelings in Singapore is that the weather is uh, something that is very strong, it's part of you, whether it's the rain or the sun. Um, this is a book made by my friends, and what kind of stories can you tell now that everyone, in a way, most people stay in a very uh, particular kind of environment. So it's an environment not with, um, it's an environment where there are a lot of these kind of um, blocks of buildings. And all these blocks of buildings are designed by one um, organization that has been perfecting or in a way refining the layout. And this book was really also just looking at how cats um, related to that physical environment that has happened. So even the other species and the other people have to interact with this new environment. This is now the latest refinement of the public housing plan. And in this um, refinement, people, as it becomes more dense and people prefer more privacy, supposedly. And so the, the cross ventilation is changed. There is less cross ventilation so that people don't share corridors and people come in through um, the lift and through a more private corridor into a unit. So this is more like a private apartment or condominium kind of plan, but this is in a way what um, they say the behaviors of the people have tending towards. So how do you begin? So one way, like my friends, is to just color the walls. I will show a series of um, works where we now uh, think how to interact with these kind of conditions. This was a study for a, for a housing project in Malaysia where the discussion changes to, and, and I, I want to use the terms that they use to discuss these kind of conditions. And one is that to increase the density um, to do where with the cities where there are more people coming. And it's a series of drawings where after we did a very quick scheme to show the potential of um, the, on that land, what you can do with it. We wanted to on our own make a series of drawings to actually Imagine how this environment, environment would be 30 years. So it's not about, in a way, just the architecture, it's about how it could be and what is the kind of life of this place. And the, the drawings that we made show, uh, in a way, what we like and how we think you could live in um, that kind of environment. So the idea of kind of a shared um, corridor that the, the rooms are very open in relation to. And so the the outdoor, which is, and this is on a higher level, is then very much part of the uh, everyday of the interior. And uh, kind of an edge where the sun and the rain comes in as you move around. So every day as you go to your apartments, it is still uh, something that you uh, part with. And in this plan, um, you move up from the leaves and you go um, to the periphery. Every unit has a kind of a cross ventilation and the textures that are filled in by the people as they stay is the, in a way the, the, the experience of this um, environment. It's along the seaside, so again, uh, along the river, so the, the 
plants and the things that are that go with that make also the environment. But also this activity of drawing actual things, how things actually change and grow, is something that um, we want to we wanted the client to see that you're also making something that people live in. It's not a uh, architecture. It's not sellable area but it's um, what is the potential of that kind of thing you are making an environment every time that we make we are making an environment that people actually live in uh, the, I, again very different from what is the potential now in the housings in Singapore because every space is quite managed so here the ground level is a space that the people can use and uh, actually change but uh, you know, we're a very dense kind of environment. So this is, um, I will now show a series of houses and they are typical terrace houses. In these um, terrace houses that we have been building, a lot of times the workers stay in these houses as they build it. So the, as they build a wall, they cook in it. So on the weekends, they go out and from the market and they come and they, they do like a bigger meal. And in Singapore, what has happened in the last um, 30 years is that more and more the workers are from other parts of the world and they are not really migrants because they are there only just as workers. So on the construction sites, um, they are from Bangladesh, China, Indonesia, Thailand, um, all kinds of people. And when they come, they uh, really live there like it's just naturally. And if you talk to them, they are actually all farmers. They are not um, workers uh, or, I mean, labor. Um, in, they were not in the construction industries. But as, as how the world always is, um, people from areas where they are, in a way, financially um, not so affluent, they were moved to areas so that they can work and bring money homes. And the fact that um, after two years, they are, in a way, like the skilled labor is what make Singapore now, really. And these walls which they which have just, just made, um, you know, they, they make comfortable positions for them to coexist with. And here's a group of people who actually have very, um, um, very diverse life experiences from really different parts of the world. And they have very, very big land where they come from. And they come here to build a really small house for a lot of things because they, they have a lot of farmland. In, in this project, the client um, also ran um, many restaurants and they brought all the wine bottles. They wanted a floor with all this glass inside. So literally the workers was trying to make a terrazzo floor for the first time. And they were, of course, very successful. And in this house, um, I am more and more interested how in the relationship between the so-called what you walk through from the exterior to the interior, the feeling to make it more shared and not so that you are making a house and the outside is separate. So it's a narrow terrace house of about six meters by about 20 meters. But between the house and the walls, we wanted to have all these gaps so that the house felt less, uh, more open. So this is a view from the top. And on the ground, um, it's a series of um, little um, spaces that you are always meandering around. The walls are always curving. And the upper level is doesn't touch the wall, and so the light also meanders through the house in a soft way. So, um, and it's in the east-west direction, so the light falls through the house. But the natural light that comes through the house always changes the house, and the change of the weather is felt in the interior. So in the plan, um, you would, in a way, be able to move um, 
quite in many ways. And that is also what I think um, we can present within a, a kind of a confined uh, interior. You know, on the upper level, it's a bit more uh, enclosed, but still, um, as you walk, there is no end. You can just freely move. And then a section where the lower level is very tall and open, and then the rooms, uh, the sleeping areas are a bit more intimate. Then on the roof, it's just a kind of a, a simple attic where the light comes through down and if you look from below, it's like a series of canopies. This is another project where um, I, it's another housing area. So I'm in a way collecting to show uh, as you how you would flow through Singapore to this kind of more private housing areas where um, these terrace plots were uh, made dating back from the 19th uh, to the 20th century. These rectangular lots were all drawn up for the housing areas. And this is a view from the roof, but the surrounding is a mix of kinds of things. But in this project, we made a roof garden, but we only planted about 10%. By um, about eight months' time, the roof completely changed. Because the, with the birds and the winds and the monsoon, the, 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 the land literally grows. And this is not soil, it's a planting media, so it's um, crushed brick volcanic um, stone from Indonesia and various kinds of things. But it's meant to be lightweight and it's a German system. But yet, um, you know, the, the natural world in, in this part just thrives. And also, um, the little planters that we had met, there was a whole kind of um, environment that is made um, with the plants growing. So, all the rooms in this house um, are all open on the different levels to the rain and the sun. You can close it but there are little pockets where, again, the sun and the light moves through the house, again, because it's east-west facing, and you have the, the change of the, you have the sun moving through the environment of the place. And it's kind of um, light conditions. The house, it's um, rebuilt to about 6,000 square feet, which is a really big house. and. If to do that, you would also be very sep be separate from each other, but we met all the spaces um, staggering from each other, so you then always have this opportunity to see across to each other. And a section to the house would be such that as you walk, the, 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 the building moves with you. It goes up and down. It's not just a kind of a series of spaces. So again, a long linear house, but wanted a kind of a freer experience. So in the plan, the a kind of a meander. And you would always be moving. But again, within, within the envelope, um, the light comes to the section showing the way that the staggering make the house uh, more, more related to each other. And the house in a way doesn't really have a facade, it's more um, how this series of levels sit with the trees that were there previously. The estate that the house was part of. Another house and now I'm, we go a bit nearer towards the uh, city area and this project involves um, a conversion from a shop house, which is a housing type, which was um, quite particular to Southeast Asia and India. Um, it's a, and it involves a kind of a conservation project. But I start from the rear, from the top. And from at the rear, we made a more porous kind of um, extension where it's a series of floor plates, but the um, light filters through. And the rooms are detached from the walls. And even though it's um, a very narrow five meters, the rooms are smaller. But the possibility that there is like a little balcony around it makes the experience feel um, more. And the outside comes in. And 
it's a kind of a glass enclosure within the back. But connecting this um, new um, small extension at the back with the old, which you see with the old clay tile, we made a kind of a staircase. And the staircase is covered by um, these little roofs, just enough for the stairs. So in the courtyard, the rain comes in, but the roofs to the courtyard, up to the staircase, grow and it becomes a kind of a hanging garden. And as you walk within the very interior, the when the wind moves, the rustling of the leaves become part of um, you. And it's uh, quite a nice uh, feeling. You, you know you're still really in the inside, but that kind of um, change happened. These plants took about six months um, to grow. They, they grew from, you know, like little seedlings. And this view from the old building looking towards it. And that's when the roof, the building was just done and the plants were just planted, so they were so small. And the sections from the front of the conserve shop house going to the back where it becomes more open, but you're in the experience, you're always moving from the old building to the new and around the courtyard. Um, steel structure and the construction where the new is a series of steel structures that are put in to connect the old, which is a timber structure beam with a brick wall. And then towards the front, um, where there was a five foot way um, below, we made a kind of a terrace at the top. This um, view from the front and the model which shows again that um, connection, but you can move. Oops. So you can move from here up and through to the new um, terrace that was made and then on this to the roof. But again, within usually it would be um, a long space. You go in and one staircase that brings you up and from there you go to the rooms. Uh, I am interested here that you are able to meander always within what is the possibility within each of these terrace houses. And then this floor dates back to the 1920s when this house was built. And already there was a press tile um, technique, which in a way has been lost even now in this part of the world, that part of the world, in the five foot way. And in the old days, there will be many families staying in one building. The ground would be where they did um, their shopping their, or their business. But as the government rezones this area, they are all now uh, residential and the life changes, it becomes quite quiet. The five foot way was an invention in the 19th century to have shelter from the sun and the rain. But so the streets shed um, the kind of a homogeneous facade and the life of the street though was very lively. The section showing um, the old conserve on the left and the new, which we wanted it to be quite similar in scale. We want to make a building that was tall. The street. Um, so about two two more house projects. This one is in the north, and it's next to this reservoir. This reservoir dates back to the 19th century, so it's one of the one of the old, oldest um, water reservoirs in Singapore. And this is a typical, a uh, very small, very tight housing estate, about six meters by 20 meters, and it was built in the 1950s. The client um, is someone who grew up in a HDB flat in a housing flat and in a way he, he is a new kind of client, a young client, someone who is grown in a certain way and then they want to move to uh, in a way uh, the, a place that allows them other kinds of experiences but in a way he's quite a special client. His um, brief was that he wanted a small house, he wanted a house that you could garden and that's quite a very different ambition because the of the in relation to the land price in Singapore, by the time you buy a house, you always build the biggest house, even though you don't really need that. So he, he in a way, was um, quite unusual. So he planted all, all the plants in this house. Um, from here, the view of the big trees behind, that's actually the reserve. And he bought, he came to buy a house in this land because he wanted to be near the natural reserve. So he planted this roof. And this plants have grown two stories from the lower area up. 
and uh, within that small uh, 1,500 square feet house, he cultivated a world. Whereas the neighbors are all very built up. Um, and then I will bring you down to the open area. So in the middle of the house is a space which is about five by um, six meters and about four meters tall. So it's not very big. But the, the living room is and the dining room and all the things that they do together are in this space. And as they go about their every day, the plants slowly grow in and the light also comes through. So the, the rooms are on both sides and very small. So, but this common space that they share then makes the house feel uh, quite special. The air moves through the, the walls, the doors that are there that are not, the rooms are very open, so the air moves through. But this kind of continuous transformation is a bit like how, what's so amazing about this interior space here. We have this kind of window that is, every time that you come, it just gives you so much I think that the kind of relationship is really very interesting than just pure um, making a beautiful interior. And from the rooms, it's very small and you're always seeing out. So it's a house that we, in a valley, and we, we built keeping to the original level. And the house in the beginning when trees were just first planted. And the house before that where it was set in the valley and the construction is um, really simple and small. And the old brick wall that is there, we keep, we put a new, and the, the, the dimensions really come from just what is needed. And the climb, who planted the house, and the rooms, and in the courtyard. And the, uh, so there are many, actually, many movements in this house, a few staircases that allow you to move through in different ways. A lot of people stay in this house, about six people. And in the estate, um, if, if we, when we walked around, all the houses were all very interiorized and very generic. You come in from living room, kitch, um, kitchen, and then the bedrooms. But here, the house is really like a series of enclosures within a kind of a garden scape. Two more projects quickly. Another shop house. This is a very old project, and I thought to put in because it also shows how much is transforming. It's also a conservation project and at the same time that Singapore decided to really um, accelerate in its construction, it passed all these laws to conserve certain areas. So it's a very small 3.6 meter land and by the time the client bought the house, the land um, was not even in the original but if we were to do this project we would have to restore to um, the model that's on the right. Uh, street from the 1920s these buildings here have all been demolished and new ones have come up. But in the neighborhood, um, it was near the Indian um, quarters. So there were mosques and temples and this is a shop selling fabric. But the size of the building is so small that by the time you put a bale of fabric, it takes up the scale of the, of the shop. So that would also be the project that you're working with a very small space. Back. So the Conservation allows that this has to be kept at the rear. You can do to the possible kind of um, area that is required. So one way is then to go up. So in a way, the envelope for this project came from the guidelines. We made a kind of a, a continuous space that you walk, and as you walk, different rooms and different kind of experiences. And it was a very vertical kind of house. But also, to live in that kind of space, we were thinking that you are inside, but the city and the views from the different parts become part of also the inside. And if three persons sit, it's like the size of the house together. So it's very tight. But the structure at the back was this new concrete structure. And this project is was one of my first projects, but the, this scene of carpenters who are about 70 years old, and they would have a lineage to Shanghai and they will draw a one-to-one -one detail and when they draw it's from their body you don't you do not meet this kind of knowledge anymore in singapore and singapore is really now um, a very different kind of building craft um, the clients and the, with the new experiences within the old and in this conservation which is a, again a very particular kind of conservation the government comes to inspect 
to ensure that um, it's it follows a kind of a, a, a actually a, a dream because it, there's no such thing as a correct and a final and a, a, a finished thing. And architecture is not finished, but in, in this kind of description, it is. And they also control the whole street in terms of the function that it just becomes purely residential. But I think this is a kind of a transformation in Singapore. I don't think this is the end. But I, my, I think it's we are saying it so that it's worth discussing. And then a series of scenes walking through. And you start seeing different things. And then uh, as you go up, you have always a very different relationship with the city and the roof and then the tower. Um, the, the last house project. So did, and on another part, um, on an island that, where they reclaim more and more um, of the land. Originally, Singapore was about two over a thousand islands. It was an archipelago. But now if you go, it's really like just one man land that they fill in everything and they're extending and shaping the periphery. This is of an island and they, which is this whole land is reclaimed and the size of this house um, is, is big and the client wanted it to, to find the biggest piece and you buy a piece of land and you build but it's all unreclaimed. And because it is so big, the experience of it would be that you will always almost be um, inside. So within the inside, we wanted to then bring very much the exterior into the as you walk and as you use the house. The roof is a kind of a simple um, uh, undulating landscape, and then as you move around, uh, you're always part of the outside in that space, and it's a kind of a floor plates with timber enclosures. And the courtyards allow the rain to come in and all this kind of. And um, the enclosures, while are strong, the windows are all a bit bigger so that when they're fully open, it's really a kind of uh, enclosure with the spaces moving, with the, the air moving through it. So when the structure was built, actually this was the perfect condition because it was half enclosed, half open. The building is somewhere on this uh, main main uh, extension to the island. I'll show now uh, 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 three more, but uh, a shift in the the situation. This is across the sea to um, the south to Batam to Indonesia, and it's a project that's part of a resort um, by a Singaporean and Indonesian developer. And when we were approached, um, the resort was finishing and they already had built a pool, and they wanted. Uh, a kids club to be made out of bamboo. So after we made um, some drawings, um, they were brought around to various bamboo contractors in Indonesia. And when the Indonesian contractors came, they brought with them from Bali their model, um, um, which was the way that they thought, which is actually a construction model. And obviously I have only so little knowledge of bamboo. Bamboo is um, not possible in Singapore because of fire. So the, it was, a, in a way, what I could learn from them. And the, the working with bamboo was that the structure would need to be about 2.5 meters apart, and but unless it was just a roof. So the lower areas are more enclosed, and the upper areas is a simple roof. And um, whatever shapes that you draw, actually bamboo is uh, quite an amazing material. They can make, they can bend, they can cut. This whole building, including the nails, are out of bamboo. And um, when the, after they were soaked, they were brought in and they were assembled in about six months. The lower levels are more enclosed. They are more the play, are more um, separate play areas, but actually it's just kind of a meandering space. And then on the upper levels, it's more open, but with bamboo, you need to close it more. And then on the lower level, we had a kind of a ramp that brought you up to the upper level and then you walk down or you slip down and then on the upper level it was open and the rain came so but this whole building moves every time someone is playing or 
walks through, you can actually feel the movement of the building. When the monsoon wind came, the air moved through the building. The surrounding buildings with their glass roofs flew off. The fence got bent. And uh, so it was a kind of a learning that a natural material is actually very porous. Even the roof is porous. but And because of that, actually, it's cool at all times. And then the, leaf, the different layers of um, the reinforcement, the Different sections, different thickness of the bamboo are used for different things, from the floors to the handrails. And they work with very simple materials, so they, they don't wear shoes, they have a knife and an axe, and they make the whole building. It's, um, so it's, the, in a way, my first encounter with uh, that kind of craftsmanship. A series of images. I, when I first went to Singapore, I worked in the typical kind of a shop house. And every Friday, we would prepare for a party. And when we had our party every Friday afternoon, we would always go to the outside because that's where you're comfortable for. And, and I think that to, to be, to do things, um, what is the potential in relation to how we feel is actually a great kind of thing. And so, and, and that's why more and more, I think when we make something, the, the possibility to relate to the possibility of the space is also what is enough to, to think, is not to think, um, and, the pro and people have to adjust to the program. I mean, the, the, you can adjust to the possibilities of the space. This was an office in the same space, but before we renovated, but here that between, within the inside already, if you, um, how the outside could come in. So this map shows, um, I'm from, uh, where I pray? So Singapore is here, and then I was born in um, Kuching, which is here. So this is the whole Borneo, Borneo Island, and then above here is now Malaysia. These are all, in a way, very modern terms. All these names are almost from the 19th century. Before that, they also were called in other things. The words are not new. Singapore or Malay Malaysia or Borneo are very old names, but they were actually different parts. And um, as you may know, the, there was a line that was drawn here. And then from above was where the British East Indies was, and where the South was where the Dutch um, took over. And in the 15th century, and I was just reading earlier, Vasco da Gama um, came through here. And right here is Malacca. So already it's uh, super interconnected. Um, and this map is taken from the meteorological uh, map, the haze map. About three years, five years ago, there was a very, very serious haze. Haze is when the, there was burning and the smoke was, con you could not see anything. But the whole region was con completely covered in smoke from um, Sumatra in Indonesia because the peatlands um, were burning. And literally this map had, was invented and every minute if you look at this map, it completely changed because the air completely moved. So it made these beautiful clouds on the on this screen. But if you're there, you just cannot see anything and it's actually very harmful. But it also means that because of these winds, um, that's why Singapore grew because the, it was a point from the half the year, the winds come from the northeast and the other half, it comes from the southwest. So for the same reason, Vasco da Gama could sail and bring back the wonders of the world and vice versa really in relation to those winds. But to this day, the winds still, especially for me, I think it's the experience, it's a very physical experience, and it's really the potential of the environment. This was the house that I grew up in, in the 60s. This house was built um, or in the late, the late 60s, and on the ground floor, it's um, open, and it's a house on columns. And the architect was a Taiwanese architect, also all the way in, Sarawak and Sarawak, the Chinese came from China uh, because every time again you are trying to seek for a better life and they came and they built. But it was a concrete house and it's called a compound house, the design. It's a house on steel. But the word compound comes from the word kampong, which is a Malay word for village agglomeration, but a house on steel. But it's a but it also means that the everyday experience is that you are also playing and growing up in the in the below this open space, which is open to the environment. So again, a very different idea of a house in a flat. 
this is a friend's house that is a similar house and they have not changed for the 50 years. So they still keep um, the ground floor open. They have a water tank, you know, where they collect water to wash things. They have their table, their kitchen washing on this ground, their living furniture, their plants, their collection of things. But it also means that their every day actually is a very nice life. It's, you don't need aircon, and but you also live um, more with the ground. This is a drawing of a friend's house in Kuching where um, actually it's a, almost like a jungle, but actually there's a one house, two house, three house. He slowly bought many houses. But when you go there, um, every time you go, he, he did all that and he kept certain trees and he grew many trees. So when you go there, it's another environment that is possible. And that's him. And when you walk through the, his garden, by the time you walk about 10 minutes, you are completely wet. Really, um, but you are really alive because you know you you have done this walk and when you take off your shirt, you're covered by mosquitoes. But it's a special kind of um, scenery. So, oh, this in the drawing is not so good, but um, this is a um, two two more projects. So this one is a, a food center we finished in Singapore a few years ago with my friends um, KUU. So it's a and in this project um. We wanted to make just a roof that comes up and down because it's in the garden. And after um, one year, the gardens grew um, around immediately. The roof is planted. But if you are in that space, you are always looking and surrounded by plants. And this is the concrete roof and inside is that um, shelter. And it's the and the, the edge of this building is always curving. And if you are moving, you are always um, following the curve. So it feels, um, hopefully we say, more natural. And when you are in here, you are always um, just underneath the shed with the outside. The building has no facade in a way. It is um, just a kind of a porous space. The food areas uh, in the middle, there are a few clusters and you again you move around them and they're very simple kind of concrete structures. The building is a concrete building um, it, in, in a way that it would also require less um, a different kind of maintenance but it also relates more that whether it's the inside and the outside is the same material. There are openings where there is a bit deeper for ventilation and the, the inside and the outside um, is more is always sort of woven together. It's about four point two meter tall, and then it slopes down to two meters. The making of it, and we make a kind of a water around the building to quickly become something. And this is drawing of it on a Saturday night, where um, it becomes very crowded. Um, it's a Singapore is very urban, and people like to go to, out to eat, and in this building, they, here is just the, the scenery of you know, many people coming together and, and in a way how, how we wanted a more kind of a casual relationship. Uh, it's part of the, this gardens project and then the scenery, the roof. And this scenery. So the uh, last project, this is a project is, that is under construction in Kuala Lumpur. And um, the brief is um, uh, it's quite an unusual project because as we build, the client is also when only after we build will we will she really make decisions what it will be used for. So we have some idea for its use. So it's also quite a rare kind of project, but it's in the old city of KL, in Kuala Lumpur, which is to the north. And in and it also is a project where I think now one way to think is in that kind of world to make spaces which are, have some kind of enclosure, how much enclosure not to make, how much of light do you want to let in, how much of rain do you want to let in. So the new building is a series of uh, concrete floors where, where, where there are met, big metal walls, but when the walls don't touch the floors, with, but there are mesh floors. But it also means that rain comes in, and how do you engage with this kind of condition? So the, uh, the environment then really shapes your experience inside. It's next to the go-down, old warehouse. 
the warehouse is already very interior rust, but the new building is, is kind of quite open building. So the go down to the left and then a series of walls uh, which don't touch the building. And uh, here the, the new building becomes a kind of a shape that at each different part it makes a different kind of a curve so that you are reacting to the different parts. The, the outlines are where the rain will come and the construction process. But as I have been doing this project, um, the building is here. I have also been um, going more and more to this area and it's a build in an area surrounded by all kinds of buildings because the planning of Singapore in a way is really much more haphazard. But in a way then therefore it has a really different kind of vitality in life. And and the trees um, in this area are really huge ficuses, so the trees really make the building possible. So because if there was no trees, I think I would not you would not be able to think about this kind of semi permeable building. But yet we are surrounded by 30 story buildings. And in the tropics, um, the, the space that's between um, very tall buildings is actually very comfortable because it's cooler and you, you have the shape actually is nice. So the construction where the new building is coming up. And in this project, the workers are all from Indonesia, from two separate parts. And, um, and they are living on the site, the model and the kind of the immediate surrounding. So the old building, we are making a kind of a timber gallery. And this building dates back uh, so to the, about the 1900s. And the little kinds of furniture the workers make, make to sleep and live while they are making this house. And then if you go outside, the old city is not uh, has become an area again for where the new migrant workers are actually this whole um, all the urban areas in Malaysia were built by migrant workers and they were all Chinese they were British architects in the 19th century with their drawings and the laborers were all from China then they could not speak to each other but yet they built you know, um, and now they all the workers are all from Nepal or Indonesia and so on and then the way that these buildings have changed because no one's looking after them, there are normal windows, so but it's their sarongs, and actually it um, looks even more. I mean, it has a different kind of energy. So you you walk throughout the city, you find all these kind of um, transformation um, where they're poorer. Then it's just a simple and simple kind of opening where you have more money. Then you pump it full of aircon and you build all these kind of um, interior conditions. But yet, um, if you walk on the streets, and that's why if you are on the streets, it's always very attractive. You still use the city. 